All right, everybody. Welcome to the first edition of the Nerdcast. I'm joined here by Steven. Hello. The Nerdologist. Uh, we're <laughs> going to be talking about some good stuff today. Uh, for instance, we're going to talk about the state of Nerdologist. I'll let you talk about that a little bit, Steven. Uh, some Crash Bandicoot 4 hype uh, and some other good stuff going on. So uh, let's jump straight into it with the state of Nerdologist. What's been going on there? Um. Well... I think uh, the problem we had the first time, like it's obviously been a while um, since we've posted anything on the channel. Um, besides the live streams, um, we've still been kind of present for that. But uh, I think regarding the state of the channel, I think we were trying too many things like at once. Um, like whenever we first started putting out a lot of videos, we really didn't know the identity of the channel, I guess. Um, we re really didn't have like a direction to go in. And we were kind of like trying to adapt the content to what we know was popular. And um, a lot of the stuff was kind of out of our range, too. I guess you could say like we didn't really have equipment um, <laughs> to do a lot of the things we wanted to do. Uh, but I think now we kind of have a better direction um, in in the sense of like, now we want to do content that is actually based of based off of like what we find um like kind of like what brought us to the gaming industry itself um like like for instance with us we vote we've always had a history of crash and we're kind of like the main staples in the channel now so like it kind of makes sense for us to solely uh i think the channel is probably going to be pretty heavily leaning on crash bandicoot just because that's like it's part of who we are um so it makes sense right now at least um not, not to say that we're never going to talk about another game or we're not going to play another game because I, I i mean you know you can't rule that out um at all but uh i mean and we're not really going to be here for like hey you know this we want you to come here for the latest news on crash bandicoot we're going to have it out first that's also not what we're trying to do. We're trying to, um, we want to be a place for someone to come and just have an outlet for Crash. You know, um, we'll make videos off of the Crash franchise, not like, I mean, of course, we're going we're gonna to talk about Crash 4, but it, it's kind of just like a, like a community, I guess, that you can come to and we'll have Crash content. Yeah, absolutely. And I think another important factor of that is, it was, you know, there's roughly four of us. Mm -hmm. Me, uh, you, obviously, Jarrett and Josh. Uh, and you were the one. We, we go down to your house. We'd record something. And then most of the time, we just dick around anyway. Uh, and, we, and you would have to try to salvage anything that you could. And that comes in terms with everybody working full-time jobs or mm -hmm. at points being in college you know uh i think me and you were post college at that point i know jared was still in college and i know josh has been you know working but, yeah. Um, yeah but i completely agree i think i mean a little bit of background regard like anyways is me and you met each other in kindergarten and we've been friends i'm 25 you're 25 we've been friends mm -hmm. for roughly 20 years and that all kind of started over crash bandicoot um i'm not a huge gamer like you are but i still enjoy the nerd culture the nerd aspects and all that fun stuff and i love talking about it so that's why we kind of came up with the idea of a podcast that you know revolves around our own like world including Crash Bandicoot, because Crash Bandicoot obviously is a very large part of the world. And it's, you know, less than what it we're recording this in mid August. It's less than a month and a half before mm -hmm. a game that, you know, granted growing up playing, you know, Wrath of Cortex and all the other ones, like I enjoyed them, but like, this is a game that I've been waiting for, for 20 years. Yeah. You know? and so I think, picking up right here where we really are is like a great, you know, jumping point into, you know, this kind of new, um, 
you know, new nerdologist, this new identity. Yeah. And, and that, that's another thing too, is since we're both working full time still, um, it, it, that I think that's been obviously the biggest thing for me. Um, you know, I, 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 I've been trying to set up goals so that I'm still moving forward with the channel. And, um, I've been trying to have like a big Twitch presence too, to like, <laughs> I've kind of bitten off more than I can chew, but I, I want to kind of live stream every crash game. Well, not every crash game, but like the majority of them up until uh, the release of crash four. And I'm still on crash yeah. two. Um, so I still have to kind of finish that. But that, I think that's been the biggest thing is trying to juggle everything. And with the pandemic going on right now too, plus like you can't really go anywhere, I guess. Well, you we can't have, we, can't really sit down and um, actually do anything together. So yeah. um, we've been kind of restricted on that too. Yeah. And what was it? We saw each other last Sunday for the first time since February. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've been, you know, best friends for 20 years. And that was a long time to not see your best friend. You know, we both live with, you You know, your fiance, my girlfriend, like we both live with our significant others. But, you know, we're all very, you know, especially me and you, obviously very close. And, you know, I missed you. And I told you that last Sunday. And <laughs> I think this is like something that I definitely want to, you know, do and get into and dive deep into it. Because the fact is, I have a passion for this stuff. You have a passion for this stuff. I can talk for hours, obviously, and ramble and ramble and ramble. And that's my job anyway, 40 plus hours a week. Uh, so <laughs> it's, it's natural to me at this point. Yeah. But uh, that being said, uh, and I know we kind of hit crash hard there. Uh, the <laughs> next thing we should you know, really talk about is the crash four hype. Because I am like all aboard like the hype train. For Crash 4, granted, there's some people on YouTube that could go without their videos, but I'm all aboard the hype train and all about doing my own research and the subreddit. The subreddit is a great place for, you know, getting news and stuff and some furry fan art. But yeah. I'm, really, I'm really getting hyped about Crash 4. Like, I don't even have a PlayStation 4 and I pre ordered it for PlayStation 4. <laughs> I, um, I, th I feel like I'm. I think at first I was like over, overly excited um, that it was even coming out. Um, I've been trying to kind of play ga other games to like get my mind off of it because I kind of get into this um, like tunnel vision. <laughs> like this happened with both uh, Crash Team Racing and the Insane Trilogy where I kind of had this tunnel vision and up until the release of that game, all I did was play Crash. Like at least mm -hmm. one part of the day I played Crash and it was just like, you know, it took up a lot of my like free time that you know, you know that I used to play games. But uh, yeah, I... no, go ahead. Oh, you, you go ahead. No, I was just gonna say it, but I mean, I'm still super excited um, that you know, I, I, in my honest opinion, I love everything that Toys for Bob has done. I, I know it's a, kind of a hot take in the Crash community, Crash community right now, but. Um, I like the new designs. I, I think they kind of favor a Looney Tunes esque version of you know the original PS One era. Yeah. Uh, no, don't get me wrong. I like the Insane Trilogy um, designs as well, but you know it kind of like it, it hits me in a different way. I think, and I, I feel I can't see this game like after looking at all the gameplay and all the cutscenes that they've had. I cannot see the insane trilogy within this game. You know what I mean? Like I, I couldn't see mm -hmm. if, if that game had a, had the insane trilogy, des insane trilogy design. I really feel like it wouldn't have the same um, feeling. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think, and I think I mentioned this to you before, it feels like a natural crash Four, mm -hmm. like uh, based on, you know, if the PlayStation one model from crash one, two crash two and three because they share the same model right yeah um that progression felt natural this feels like a natural progression from two and three to you know what's going to be out of time 
Uh, right. The insane trilogy model from a you know design perspective is great. It's cuddly. It's fuzzy. Uh, my girlfriend likes it. Uh, she likes it more than the old one. I'm looking at my shelf right now where I have a uh, crash plush from the 90s or early 2000s. And I have the crash insane trilogy action figure next to it. And it's definitely like the insane trilogy model is like a more like kid friendly, likable. Disney kind of character, mm-hmm. if I had to describe it. Uh, you go to Crash 4, you know, out of time. And like this, like you said, Looney Tunes, like, uh, you know, like the Bugs Bunny, like the stretchiness and like the uh, cartooniness. Like, I love that. And, you know, I'm so excited to play it. I am nervous. And I told you this before about Cortex uh, being a playable character. I think Dango Dial is going to be fun. Uh, but I, you know, I'll play through it a minimum of two times. One is Crash, one is Coco. And then the Cortex stages are going to be what? Just basically more advanced challenges of the same stage, right? Um, I don't know if there could be more advanced, but um, I guess in a sense, so like how they kind of explain how it's going to play out would be like, so you you can't play the cortex level until you've completed that stage as crash. Um, but then w- once you unlock that level, the first like half of the level is actually you playing as cortex, which has completely different gameplay. Um, and I think that's going to be a whole new challenge in itself. And I I actually kind of like um, the gameplay. You know, like what I've seen so far for cortex, I'm actually pretty excited to do those levels. Um, but uh, once you finish that, because um, there's going to be certain like um, like sequences that are going to happen when you play as Crash, where like the path is disturbed, uh, something falls over, and you can't proceed that way, or something happens behind you. Um, mm-hmm. So that's kind of where the Cortex level will end. But then you pick back up as Crash, where that like where that had like where that disturbance has just happened, and then the level has become harder. Okay. So, like for like the one they showed, um, like whenever Cortex blew up the boat, um, mm-hmm. you continued as Crash, but then TNTs were everywhere, and some of them were already like initiated. So you have to hurry up and try to get past them or figure out a way to not kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, yeah. Like, I, I kind of like because I I want to be challenged on this game. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, whenever we are growing up, you know, with Crash. You know, through Crash 3, especially, like, we created our own challenges, you know. Uh, One summer after I graduated from, what, high school, uh, you went on vacation with us to North Carolina. And if you didn't know, I thought, I didn't know we were going to the mountains. uh, But we bought, or we brought a PlayStation 3 or 1 or something. I don't remember, but I know. PlayStation 3. Yeah, but I know we were able to play the original trilogy Mm -hmm on it and we like 102 percented every game because mm-hmm. it only rains in the mountains so um <laughs> like doing that kind of stuff and finding out those new challenges and stuff uh was always fun and then you know the natural progression for the insane trilogy was it to add the relic times into all three of them and then you know obviously uh nitro field came out and you know nerdologists kind of take a hiatus over the year that it was out in you know the main focus but like that felt very natural from that and it felt like oh we got the three games again and the ctr and then i'm just happy this new game isn't crash bash because i think i would have cried um yeah that being said i'd probably still buy it and play it but yeah i couldn't see myself if playing it as much as i have for ctr yeah, you we I mean on the Switch alone, like me and you ha- were what playing almost like once a weekend every weekend. Uh mm. you know, pre pandemic and during the pandemic. And I know I have over I'm sure people have a lot more hours in it, but I have like two hundred and ninety plus hours in it. I know you have three hundred plus in it. Yeah, so I think I'm I'm a little over three hundred now. 
Yeah, but like that felt like a natural progression. That felt like, you know, Beanox did a great job and uh you know, who who did uh Vicarious Visions did a great job in Insane Trilogy, but that felt like a good place to leave it off and start right. kind of fresh. And mm-hmm. that's where that's why I'm happy about, you know, four coming out because it feels fresh. It feels like a crash or I mean I haven't played it yet, but it looks like a Crash Bandicoot game. It sounds like a Crash Bandicoot game. You know, they have they implemented something new like they did, you know, with Wrath of Cortex, even with the, you know, the elemental masks in that game. You have the masks that help you in this game. I can see kind of mirror images in that, but like the way they're working here makes a lot more sense. And like Crunch became Water Crunch or Crunch became yeah. Cloud Crunch and he shoots lightning out of his hands, you know. Yeah, I agree. It just feels a lot more, you know authentic to crash and you know the natural progression mm-hmm. from naughty dogs crash to you know this i guess toys for bob crash instead of going to what was it traveler's tales yeah uh yeah, for rap sense. cortex and then eventually red button which you know i'm pretty sure they're a defunct studio i think <laughs> traveler's tales is also a defunct studio but that's you know yeah uh, red button <laughs> <laughs> But you've been playing a lot of then the insane trilogy, right? Even on the uh, on the Twitch channel. Yeah, um, I finished one on my Xbox uh, whenever I was uh, streaming through there, mm-hmm. um, and then once I got my my gaming laptop all set up, I I actually bought the insane trilogy on my um, on my PC. Um, it ru- I think I had it running at 80 frames a second. Um, yeah, you sent me that video. I was like, holy crap. Yeah, it was pretty smooth. Um, the, the, because you're getting more frames, like, like they, they, you know, like you're seeing more. Um, mm-hmm. it, it actually makes a lot of the precision jumping so much easier, uh, which was weird. Like, I felt, I kind of felt like I was playing a new version of that game, even though really it was the same there's no difference between the two um i just live streamed on tuesday i think with um like straight from my pc Mm. uh and it was probably the best looking content i've put out like it's not in 4k but it looks 4k oh yeah i uh it's funny because i can't go to sleep without background noise and it sounds creepy as well now that i think about it but uh i streamed your because i didn't catch it live but i streamed your crash 2 gameplay on what tuesday it was mm-hmm. wednesday uh to my tv whenever i was falling asleep i was like oh he made the jump and like i was like getting all hyped about that kind of stuff but like you know the twitch is all you and you know you're doing some great stuff over there i know that uh you know, there's a few subscribers over there. And, you know, if you play on a streaming, I'm sure, you know, it's going to grow. Uh, yeah, I've been trying to hop on there as much as possible. Um, and I, I've been reading a lot of, like, tips from, um, you know, from people who, not that not that they have a huge fan base, but, like, uh, there was a couple of blogs um, I was reading uh, that they're just kind of giving tips. And <laughs> the hardest thing is, like, trying to find the time the right time at the right time of the day to um, stream for like a, an extended period of time. Um, yeah. You're, you're supposed to average about four hours of stream. Um, and, and a lot of people are saying, if you don't have an, if you don't have enough time to at least get four hours, then there's really no need for you to stream. Um, I'm still trying, <laughs> even though I can't hit that four hour mark yet. Um, but I'm, I'm really not going to give up. I, I don't have any subscribers yet. I think I think hey guys, I, subscribe. I, I think I have eight followers. Um Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I forgot uh, on Twitch there's a difference between subscribers and followers. Yeah. Um but I mean I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping more people uh start to pick up. But um I don't know. I, I really like using Twitch compared to YouTube. Um like streaming wise, it's so user friendly. Um, I, 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 I guess I could say it's not as much traffic. 
um, as I had on YouTube, but um, it's definitely, uh, I, I think, my favorite platform to stream on. Yeah, I know whenever the pandemic first started, you were streaming a bit on YouTube. Uh, it just felt, always felt like there, YouTube, you know, YouTube is not made for streaming, you know. Mm -hmm. They they got into the game after you know everybody else did, and that's kind of what Google's mo has been. They were obviously the first, we're well, not the first one even, but you know they bought all these platforms and then tried to upgrade them to the greatest and latest or latest and greatest. I guess would be the better way to say it. But they're like pushing so hard, so often changing the criteria, so often changing the way people are able to make money on YouTube so often that like it's hard to keep up with and then they never really invest into the platform itself it feels like right and i i think it's so hard to um like like you said because the algorithm's always changing um i i don't even think youtube knows what it is <laughs> um but i i think that's the challenge too that i think that's why i kind of decided to have us kind of just kind of do like a passion project, I guess, like mm -hmm. kind of like we're kind of just kind of make the content that we feel is right instead of trying to make the content that we know people are going to want to watch. Yeah. And I think only, only doing that because I, I'd rather feel good um, knowing that we put like a lot of time and um, love into a video and it going up onto the channel, whether it does good or not. I mean, it is what it is, but I would feel better knowing that I put out the best content. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think, you know, like even that, even though we tried to, or we're trying to structure, you know, this Elma's podcast esque, like it feels like I'm just, you know, talking to my friend, you know, BS mm -hmm. about whatever. Uh, you know, like if, if we're expecting numbers and, you know, it'd be great, you know, we have a, you have a Patreon set up and all that stuff. And, you know, we can figure out some kind of goal there. Uh, we can always leave that up to, you know, people to see what they want to see. But, you know, the fact is like you, you we're, we're both working 40 hours a week. You know, we both have lives outside of, you know, this we're, I, I'm not planning on making it a full-time job anytime soon, personally. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I am completely okay at 11 o'clock on a Friday night sitting down and talking to my best friend for however long, you know? That, yeah, and I completely agree. I, I'm not stressed about it. I'm not going to stress about it. But if you would like to donate to the Patreon, you know more about that than I do, Steven. I actually don't know too much at all. I, I set it up. And, um, I, I mean, I, I at least set up the account. Um, mm -hmm. I really, I really don't know what or how to use it, I guess. But, um, you know, I, I just always have it there in case people want more content out of us. Um, yeah. you know, that's just a way that always helps. I mean, I would never, ever ask anyone to donate, but you know, it's just always something like, uh, anything that gets made on there would go directly back into the channel oh yeah we could even do something like uh if you donate to the patreon you get to be a guest on the podcast <laughs> which might get two viewers but you know hey you're buying maybe a new elgato so <laughs> uh yeah but um i think that you know, doing nerdologist instead of like we played the most fun, and I've told you this before, and I know we're kind of diving back into you know the state of nerdologist almost, but the most fun I had playing games with you and Josh and Jarrett uh, was playing Gang Beasts or playing uh, the Dumpster Bear thing. Oh my god, uh, uh, Gang Beasts was so fun. That, that was like the first time I ever played that too. Was um... yeah. The, like the first video we put up is of that. So that was like, like a raw reaction to like, what is this? Yeah, it's an absolute, you know, shit show, you know, to put it bluntly. But it was fun, and it made us laugh, and it made us, you know, like just mess around with each other and punch each other in the face without, you know, like 
it was fun. But you know, if you look at the YouTube statistics on those videos, you get like four views. Yeah. You know, to me that never mattered. Or I mean, it it, it feels bad. You know, sometimes where you're like, I, we put a lot of work into this and trying to be funny, like, you know, yeah. should get more views. But well, hey, shit happens. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I never took it to heart, really, but it it, it was just like, um, it, it was a lot of time and effort into it. And at the time, I was the only person editing. So, like, if I didn't have time to edit it, I was just kind of like, I don't know <laughs> when I can get to it. But oh yeah, um, on the topic of Gang Beasts, though, uh, there is a new game that came out. I don't know if you've seen anything about. I'm sure you've. It's everywhere, but Fall Guys. Yes, it's like kind of like a race to finish game. So it, it's kind of like um, it, it's it's a physics based game, kind of like Gang Beasts, but mm-hmm. um, just imagine like Wipeout with physics based characters, and it's a battle royale. So like about what? It's a battle royale game. Okay, okay. I was like, but, I thought you said it's about L'Oreal. Oh like no, no. Shampoo. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah, they have great scalps. Um, no tears. Yeah, no tears. But uh, yeah, no, it looks great. I I really I don't know what to pick it up on, but at some point I want to pick up that game and try it. Yeah, I, I it looks. I don't even I don't even know. I'm assuming it's on Switch. It's not. Oh, well, then I will not be playing it. I know that that's, it surprised me, but I think because it, it might take a while for it to come to Switch because um, it, it's it's all online. So, like, I don't know if the Switch servers can really handle it. Um, mm-hmm. The servers actually crashed for, uh, I think, for PS4, Xbox One, and um, PC the first week it came out because they had, they had over like 1.5 million people trying to get on. Yeah. That's a lot. And it's in, they're not a indie studio. They're an indie developer that was published by, um, a non indie develop, uh, producer Mm -hmm. or publisher. I'm sorry. But, um, like there's, that's, that's, that's awesome for an indie developer to get that much. Um, um, what would you get? traffic i guess oh yeah and more power to them because i've seen james and elise willems from funhouse play it um i've seen our best friend canadian guy a play it or i know he played it um yeah. I, I, there's been a lot john of people play. oh yeah john and bruce from funhouse i know lana from funhouse has played it. if you haven't noticed we like funhouse <laughs> uh but yeah, I mean, it looks really fun and it looks like, you know, I get to have a good time playing it because all I've been playing other than the occasional CTR, I kind of got tired of that or not tired of it because I'll always love that game. But I've kind of got like, you know, like a little worn out. I unlocked everything I wanted to unlock. Um, but I've been playing Animal Crossing uh, daily. It came out, unfortunately. Even if it's just to check my mail in the game, which sounds insane because I check my physical real life mail maybe once a week. (laughs) But I I make sure to check my Animal Crossing mail every day. But. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, a lot of people, that's a lot of people's escape to um, being quarantined. Yeah, it came out at the perfect time, I think, Mm -hmm. because I never played Animal Crossing before that. But uh, speaking I, of another, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was, say, I was just going to say, I don't think it would have done anywhere near the numbers it did if it wasn't for the oh, abso- team. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But I mean, they came out with a, like a huge anticipation from the core fan base. And then March, like the world changed. And that was the last time I was at Walmart was to buy a physical copy of Animal Crossing. You know? Mm-hmm. And uh, I would never even intended on buying it. I was just like, I guess it's what I'm going to do for the next month. And now we're in August, four, five months later. And you say at Walmart, well, I'm fucking bored. <laughs> but I mean, that game came with a lot of hype and anticipation, kind of like Crash 4. 
and kind of like what I wanted to kind of talk about next because I recently got HBO Max and it costs way too much a month, but it's definitely worth it for the content that's on there, uh, like close enough and all the HBO series. But mm-hmm. I got really into the Harley Quinn animated series and I'm not a fan of the actress Kaylee Cuoco or Haley, whatever her name is, from Big Bang Theory. Um, but she voices Harley Quinn in it and kind of got my wheels spinning in my head because I used to be a huge comic book reader. Um, and then yeah. the Suicide Squad game popped up from Rockstar within mm-hmm. the same week of me like kind of being like, I think I like comic books again. And I was like, holy sh- Like, this is something that like I am actually interested in outside of like you know the let me catch a fish game let me race a cart game let me do some platforming because i love the arkham games the batman arkham games uh i beat all of them ex- I, I, me and you played together arkham knight arkham. right yeah the one, one with the red hood or yeah the arkham knight who turns into red hood so spoilers for a game that's what six years old um but it's by the same studio, and the the teaser graphic for it looks like Superman. I'm gonna share my screen over on here. Uh, have you seen this? I I, I did. Um, somebody else mentioned that it was not Superman. It, I'm, I don't know if I'm on the right thing that I want to yeah. show, and it's very loud in my ears right now. Um, but. Somebody mentioned it was a different. Um, uh, who was it? I'm sorry, it's really, really escaping. Is it Shazam? No. Um, keep going down. So this is Gadgets 360. I do not want the newest news from Gadgets 360. Um, Rocks or is Rocksteady Studios Target Lock DC Fandom, which is next weekend. Um, but to me, that looks like kind of like the Injustice fighting game Superman. Yeah. Which could be yeah, the Batman yeah. Arkham style Superman, but I mean, that was I'm a good. Oh, I was gonna say, I'm just a big Harley Quinn fan in general, uh, from reading the comics, you know, years ago, whenever I was in college and high school and the Suicide Squ- Squad movie with, uh, you know, Will Smith was absolutely atrocious uh did you get a chance to see the uh birds of prey movie uh no i just it was was okay i mean it was okay but like them making a game based off of a comic that is apparently based off of the uh suicide squad versus the justice league comic series that came out like in 2014 or 2017, I guess. I'm reading here online. Uh, if it has the same gameplay style as Arkham Knight and Arkham Asylum and Arkham City and Arkham Origins, which we know out of the four of those, which one's the worst? Uh, and that's Arkham Origins. But yeah. <laughs> if it has the same gameplay as that, you know, that's another, you know, I'm going to figure out how to get a PlayStation 4 for Crash 4. I will definitely be picking up this game. Even if it, I mean, it's going to yeah. probably come on PS5, but hey. Uh, see, I, I thought it was kind of funny because, like, there's a bunch of people saying that they hope that they, they hope that it's not a games as a service game, which I can't really see Rocksteady doing only, only because I don't think they've done a game like that. Do a game like what? Like a games as a service, um, which would be like, uh, like Warzone, mm. um, Fortnite. Not not like a battle royale, but like a free game. It's a free game that you spend your money on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But let me. Yeah, I can't find. I was trying to see if I found like the Twitter page I was on whenever people were talking about this game. And I was trying to see. Everyone just keeps saying Superman, but yeah, there was another character that. uh Okay, yeah. I mean, it's not worth mentioning, I guess, but... um, So, apparently, I guess there is a leaked... What was it? That Rocksteady have 
they were talking about, um, they kind of hinted that the Suicide Squad game would be uh, the death of the Justice League. Hmm. So, like, you would be killing the superheroes. So I, I don't know how they would handle that, but that sounds intriguing and dark. Yeah, I like. I'm all about like. I'm not a horror game guy, but I'm about the action and adventure. And like, you know, there's parts of Arkham that is like follow Clayface's, you know, tracks to find him. Blah, or you know, you know. I remember whenever Arkham Asylum came out, and I think me and you played that as well uh, together whenever it first came out. But like, I remember that Bane fight, and I was like, holy shit, this is a good game. Just like, and I think that's the first fight in the game. Yeah, it was like, like, and then I mean, you know, like I'm, like I said, and I don't want to sound like a weirdo, but like I'm a fan of Harley Quinn. I'm, I hate the Joker though, uh, so I'm not like that kind of kid. But uh, like I like, you know, the Killer Croc, and you know, not Will Smith's Deadshot, but Deadshot's okay. So I'm excited about it uh, in general. You know, I think it's, you know. What has Rock City come out with since Arkham Knight? Nothing. That, so that means that there has been a, maybe a lot of work done on this game, and they might say holiday 2020 it comes out, or they, I mean, you know, Q1 2021, which is probably more likely. But so, so here's what I'm going to say without knowing anything about this game, I think that this game has a huge chance to be very um it has oh i'm sorry let me rephrase that it has a better chance at being um a success compared to the marvel avengers game that's gonna drop in a no two weeks two to three weeks i didn't even know that yeah no one does like literally (laughs) there, there are people that work in the industry that kind of forgot or don't know that literally that Marvel Avengers game is out September 4th. Did it get pushed? No. <laughs> so it's always been September it's, 4th. It's always been Well, it might have been like August or something at one point. Yeah. But it's September 4th. Yeah, like uh for like I know like they have had Funko pop figures for that game. But that's all I knew. Like I didn't. I what did they announce at E three last year? Um, and then it was two years ago. Jeez, it would would have been two years. Ago. Not yeah, because it wasn't this past year. It was the year before. Yeah, um, that's. It, but but that game <laughs> is a beat 'em up looter. Like it's not a looter shooter, obviously, but like. It's a loot based game. Yeah. But it's structured exactly like Destiny. So, okay. I don't know how that's going to play out. Um, and that whole thing going on right now where you can only play as Spider Man on, on Sony, like, like, on, like on PlayStation. They just announced that, like, I think last week that, um, <laughs> that uh, anybody else who, who owns the game, whether it's on PC or Xbox, will not have access to Spider-Man. That's strictly only PlayStation. And I really... That's absolutely insane. Yeah, and I, I think that... I mean, again, it's a smart business decision. I completely get why PlayStation's doing it. However, I think it's wrong because that's going to kill the sales for Xbox and, and PC, honestly. Because yeah. everybody who owns a PlayStation... I mean, Spider-Man it makes huge numbers. Mm-hmm. Like if you like, for instance, like look, look at the movies, um, like like movies and games, uh, yeah. Like, for instance, you, like you see, oh, uh, what was it called? Um, oh, well, like the Avengers movie. Mm-hmm. So like, the people are dissing on this game because obviously, like, they can't replicate like Captain America. They can't uh, use like, it like for Chris Evans, right? Yeah, because they 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 don't own that. Um, it's yeah, Disney. they don't want to pay those actors, right? So, um, like, people are, are having a hard time looking at the game and saying, "Well, this is the Avengers," because to them, it's not. Um, yeah. 
and I get that, but it's funny because you, when you do that to this game, you look at how Sony came out with the new Spider-Man game or any Spider-Man game that's came out in the past because they all relatively do very well. Um, mm-hmm. Like nobody goes, well, this isn't Tom Holland, you know. Like, but ever like Spider-Man was cute. That that was probably one of the biggest successes that Sony's had this generation was the Spider-Man game. Oh, yeah. I mean, they kicked off their PS5 announcement with Spider-Man Miles Morales. Oh, I'm know? so excited for that. It was beautiful. That looks that looks awesome. And I think the big difference between... I mean, DC's movies have flopped. Like, I can admit to that. They have been straight trash. Uh, Justice League was probably one of the worst movies I've seen. And I'm a DC fanboy. And, you know, that's just how it is. I didn't know anything about Iron Man or, you know, Captain America or like, you know, the actual Marvel owned characters because until recently, Disney owned the Avengers, Fox owned, you know, what, Fantastic Four and X Men, and then Sony owned Spider Man and his gaggle of characters. Um, I knew about Spider Man because Spider Man is a badass, you know, like, kind of quippy kind of character who you're like mm-hmm. I like this guy but they never really pushed the rest of them whenever you know I mean I can't say I grew up without you know the Avengers because Iron Man came out what 07 and I would have been what mm-hmm. 12 uh, that being said though like I associate Robert Downey Jr. with Iron Man I associate Chris Evans with Captain America you know yeah I can't turn on that game and I'm one of those people I'm not a huge, you know, not not necessarily a huge video game person but like I I'm not like one of those people like I can't play this game because it's not those characters but I'm like uh oh, Robert Downey Jr would have probably been a better Iron Man than, you know, this fake looking or you know Robert Downey Jr knockoff looking character. Because they're right. so similarly close to the characters in the movies that you're like, "Oh, come on. Like either pay them or don't." Well, but Spider-Man like go ahead. Well, they're they're similarly close, but yet so bland. Like they yeah. don't have any characteristics. They're just kind of like they're, they're, they're like those people <laughs> when you buy a new picture frame and you get like that stock photo of a family. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how I like when I look at the Marvel Avengers. I'm like, okay, yes, but why? It's like I can see Captain America here, but he looks like my dad, <laughs> like. <laughs> Not, yeah. not, not Chris Evans, but close, you know? I, I laughed when you said that because in my headset, it sounded like you said Kevin America, which I was like, yes, you're right. It's not Captain America. It's Kevin America. Kevin America <laughs> in Iron Boy, which I'm sure is a Marvel character because uh, they have everybody. And then you have Thor, but Thor has like this gray beard. And so I just think of like, I, I, I'm not going to go for the softball and call him Boar, but <laughs> I mean, they look like just like if I go down to downtown Pittsburgh, like you, 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 and you, you're playing Marvel characters, you're going to be in my video game. Like, that's what it looks like. <laughs> Close yeah, enough. I, like, I completely agree. <laughs> uh, but like, I've been th- like that Suicide Squad, you know, getting in back into DC kind of got my brain, you know, the wheels turning. Uh, and this is just like within the last two weeks, uh, me and my girlfriend binged, you know, a bunch of stuff on HBO Max because paying, like I said earlier, too much for it, you know, already. But um, I mean, and you kind of got into Spider-Man and that's kind of like your superhero go to. But like, mm-hmm. have you been playing a game recently that you're like, this is a, you know, this is other than Crash, obviously, but like a game that you like can't turn off. Like, and I wrote down a segment called, I'm trying to transition as best as I can. <laughs> if I, I call it Steven's favorite game ever this week. Jeez. Um, there's actually quite a few few games that i've been kind of like just juggling back and forth um i kind of put spongebob on the back burner for now i'll come back Mm. with that though because it's just kind of like a mindless platformer um i gotta say the best game well i got the the game that took up most of my time 
um, within the past couple of weeks has, has been Ghost of Tsushima. Um, I don't care what anyone says about it. Like that is such a good game. Um, it's such an awesome way to like it, it's. I've never really had a game where it's been so relaxing, like to kind of traverse the world. Everything is so beautiful. Everything catches your eye. It's relaxing because it's kind of like there's no really music while you're tr- like while you're riding ground. All you hear is just nature, and then like all of a sudden you break out into a fight because you've come across enemies or you've gotten to your waypoint. Um, I really really like that game. I I have to finish it. I'm only on Act Two, uh, and there's I think there's three acts, but the game's pretty long. Um, but it's weird. I've never had this happen like. And like in, in the longest time, um, I usually kind of play a game and then, you know, just keep it my collection. But mm-hmm. um, I, I, I'm 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 probably gonna say it, but like the next game I'm about to mention <clears throat> is one that I've beaten already, and I've went back and like 100 percent of it. But uh, it's probably one of my favorite games ever made, besides Crash. Like this is one of my favorite games ever made. And I will always, always, always tell people to at least try this game. But um, I think after I'm done with Ghost of Tsushima, I'm actually going to pick Control back up and start playing that. Um, that game hit me in such a certain way that like a game really hasn't had this effect on me in such a long time. But there's so many times where like I'm playing a game and I'm like, ah, oh, man, I kind of want to play Control again. Um, See, I'm- I've never heard of Control. It's so good. I can't even describe it to you, to be honest. Like you, you would kind of have to watch a gameplay. Even if you watch a trailer, it kind of like leaves you wondering, like what it's about. Mm-hmm. But I'm such like a su- I don't want to say sci-fi nerd, but I'm like I, like I'm heavily into like um, kind of like the paranormal side of things and stuff like that. And this game is just so like like. I really don't want to get into like the whole like nitty gritty of it because it's gonna bore you. But um, they're coming out with a new expansion for it, and it's like almost the size of another game, and that comes out August twenty seventh, I think. Um, and there was a game called Alan Wake, um, made by the same developer as like I want to say it had to be like almost ten years ago. It was on the Xbox three sixty. Um, and the the games are actually taking place in the same universe um and they're connected because they're both kind of paranormal adventure games um yeah. supernatural I, i'm sorry not paranormal supernatural um and they're connected and this whole next one kind of branches those two games together um uh story wise and i'm really excited to see how they kind of pull that off but um Oh, like I love that game so much, and I'm probably gonna pick that back up again and start playing. What platform have you been playing that on? I I originally bought it for my Xbox, and I played it on that. Um, and then I never bought like the DLC for it because it, it was kind of, it was pricey for um, like it, it, it. I guess it just didn't fit my budget at the time. Um, but I just recently. I want to say maybe last month I actually picked it up on PlayStation uh, on the PlayStation store. I paid for control and all the DLC, including a new one coming out for like $20. Jeez. It was super cheap. Um, so I'm probably going <laughs> to, I'm probably going to do that. I might, I, I, I was thinking about live streaming it too, because I actually got a, uh, um, you've got me on this eBay kick, like for things that I can't find in the store. I've been going to eBay. So I actually got a PlayStation camera for like 30 bucks. Which like to cool. record yourself on it. Yeah. It's a live stream on Twitch. So I got, I actually got that in preparation. I crash for it because I, for some reason my Elgato won't pick up my PlayStation anymore. Um, yeah. I think, I think it just kind of aged out and bit the dust a little bit, but Hey, yeah. But yeah, sorry to go off on a tangent about control, but oh no, completely okay. I mean, that's what the <laughs> Steven's favorite game this week 
segment is supposed to be. I want to hear about it because you know, like even just you talking about it, like I'm like, well, like I Googled it and like I started looking into it because I never heard of it before. And I'm like, this, like the description is like control is an action adventure video game developed by remedy entertainment and published by five Oh five games. Control was released on blah, blah, blah. And then I read a little bit more about it and it's, I'm like, okay, okay. Got 4.3 out of five stars. Not bad at all. And then I like started kind of watching some of the gameplay. Um, or the trailer at least without any audio on and like it's just like so like visually appealing that I'm like I would probably want to play this game. It, it it's visually appealing but like it surprises you because like w- when you start up the game you actually I want to say the first couple hours into the game you don't even know what the game's about and you don't mm-hmm. know what's going to happen. But like the way they play it is like they kind of like use that to their advantage so they surprise you every time so like you get you get more and more powers kind of like a platformer every time you progress and something else happens you gain a power yeah and and there's something attached to you that allows you to like kind of like go against reality and like but anyway like like you get a double jump like which is weird because it's a realistic game you get like you can hover um like you can like use like a like a you get like super strength like with your melee attack um you can like dash left and right like it it's just like it, they put like platforming aspects in it there's bosses that are hidden in the game um like like you find them just kind of exploring like the uh building you're in um and you're like the only person that can see it the game's kind of trippy but like it is such. I keep trying to get people to play this game, and <laughs> and no one ever does because they're just like, yeah, I don't know. I'm like, well, I know, but like, I took a chance and just bought this game, and it was. It's been my favorite game for the past two years. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the best way I think personally to get into something or you know go about. It. Sometimes you just kind of gotta gotta take that leap. Like, you know what? I think I would like this, and then just do it, and then you. I mean. In the grand scheme of things, like it, I'm assuming it cost sixty bucks when it came out. Like, mm-hmm. if you lose sixty bucks, it, I mean that sucks. But the thing is, you're paying for that experience. If you get a good experience on it, like it's more, it's worth more than sixty bucks. In my experience, personally, with video games, is I haven't played a bad video game, or by my deeming quality, you know, as a professional video game judge. Uh, a bad video game in I don't know how long, but you know the good video games I have played more than make up for whenever that bad video game comes along. Yeah, and I was actually one of the people at first that kind of like this. Is the last thing I'll say so we can move on. Um, oh yeah, but I was I was one of those people that kind of was like you know I'm not going to pick up this game at first because I don't know what it's about, and um, I think it was right after the Game Awards. Um, it got like best soundtrack, best visuals. It didn't get game of the year. Um, actually, you know what? I wonder if it. What did. ended up getting game of the year? I was trying to think what actually got game of the year. I don't think it was Control because I was rooting for that so hard. I think I think Control got IGN's best game of the year. Um, I think that's what I'm thinking of. Um, but it wasn't until after that it was on sale for forty bucks on the Xbox Store, and I was like, you know what? I wanted to play this, so I think I'm going to pick it up. And it's it, it hasn't left my head ever since. Like, there, there were so many times where, like, I'm like, oh, man, I really want to play that game. Mm-hmm. The Game of the war- Year Award, according to the Game Awards, was Sekiro Shadows oh, Die great. Twice. Yeah. Uh, I know a little bit about that game, but it seems like one of those, and I... I mean, I've used this word for a lot of things, college professors, uh, people who brag about themselves, but whenever people called it or would review the game and, you know, talk about the game, it seemed a little bit masturbatory. Mm-hmm. We're like, oh, look at me. Like, look how great this game is. It's so great. And I'm just like, oh, that, that sometimes turns me off from games. That's because it's the same people that made Dark Souls. Yeah. And I mean... Crash, you know, is as difficult, if not if not more difficult, than Dark Souls. 
So I feel like I could handle it as the Farley or Farley, the very advanced game player that I am. I could probably handle second round. Um, but in all actuality, great for them that they won game of the year. Mm. But I, I will always fall back on if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. But don't yeah. be a dick. You know, exactly. <laughs> but speaking of things that I like personally, uh, I'm a, and Steven knows this, but I am a big collector and I can't narrow down to one thing that I collect. So I think part of our podcast might be me justifying my obsessive collective habits by talking about it for like five to 10 minutes. Uh, so. This mm-hmm. week, I'm going to talk about um, what I have recently, you know, collected in the Funko Pop realm. And I know those have kind of, s- some people consider them, you know, the Beanie Babies of the 2010s and stuff like that. And I am 100% on the trend. Uh, but I'm also a huge fan of McDonald's. Um, <laughs> as weird mm-hmm. as that sounds. And they released McDonald's Funko Pops. And I knew I had to grab them. Uh, as you know, so and they're part of the ad icon line that I already collect, and I'm looking at my desk right now, up, up above my desk, and I have you know everything from Nilden the toaster from the old Pop Tarts mascot to Smokey Bear. Uh, I was like, this feels natural. Let me just buy five McDonald's characters. Uh, so I bought Ronald McDonald, Grimace, the Hamburglar, Mayor McCheese, and Officer Big Mac, which is actually currently my avatar on uh, Discord. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the picture of Officer it. Big Mac. Um, but I think in kind of, you know, like what I said about the games is like you like what you like and you don't like what you don't like, but don't be a dick. Um, you know, everybody should have a hobby in my ha- hobby just happens to be collecting a bunch of junk uh, and plastic and stuff like that. And everybody, and I don't think anybody should be shamed for their hobby. Um, And I think that is, you know, I'm not somebody to get on a soapbox and talk about this kind of stuff. But like, I think that's a problem with a lot of communities is the gatekeeping of a community, because then you're never going to get new members of a community. Like I could sit here and talk about McDonald's, in the lore of McDonald land for the next half an hour, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, but, you know, I see it on Reddit. I see it, you know, in communities, you know, uh, around. And I think that that is something as, you know, people and especially people with interest that you need to really get over yourself because you're never going to be the only one who plays video games. You're never going to be the only one who collects Funko pops. So like, I don't know what the segment turned into and I think I'm just ranting, but, um, but I think it's a legitimate problem. Like what, what do you think about that? Like, I think if somebody wants to get into crash bandicoot, I'm not going to shit on them for not knowing that naughty dog was the f- people who made crash bandicoot. Cause their first introduction to crash might've been twin sanity. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, 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 kind of strikes a nerve with me and I and I the only reason I'm talking about this is because um you know there are people in our area who are very particular about you know what they like uh for yeah. instance uh we've talked about it and I'm not going to mention their name uh but they used to be a gaming shop in Hope that I that I've kind of stopped in a few times do you know what I'm talking about yeah it's just a bunch of cats. Mm-hmm. What makes a person want to go there? Even you know, that. if if I'm if, if I'm going to sit here and talk about Funko or you know, um, I don't know Disney pins or stuff like that, I'm not going to say like, well, I have this, and like, no, because you come off like a jerk, and you're not going to want to make somebody. So like, you know, like what you like, you know, don't be a dick, right? Um, but. That's gonna do it for Dylan's collection corner. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what else. To talk about. Well, I, I think just to add on to like the comment you made, like um, we don't have to dig too deep into it. I just uh, like 
even like with my hobby which is mainly video games like it's very niche um um following i guess but mm-hmm. like even if you do find someone else who likes video games that like you know who may not be into the games the same way you are you know you still have to, I, I i personally still feel very self-conscious about it because then the next question is well what kind of games do you play and they're most of the time they're always waiting for call of duty Fortnite, any kind of first person shooter competitive online and you know that's not me and then i'm like oh yeah i like platforming games so like haha right <laughs> yeah i mean there's yeah, but, i think but like you uh, said like you know you, you you like what you like and if you don't you don't yeah i mean i planned on for this segment to talk about funko pops and you know, I it just got I went off on this tangent about, you know, because I have had that experience happen to me today. You know, I went down to Pittsburgh to pick up as funny as it is tacos because there's this place down in Pittsburgh and I'm going to give them a, a plug, uh, Condado Tacos. I don't know if you've ever had it, but they've been doing these things during the pandemic called Bud Boxes where it's two like gourmet tacos a whole thing of chips and queso for like 10 bucks and that sounds great (laughs) yeah and like i you know it's friday my girlfriend didn't want to cook i can't cook Uh, so i was like i'm just gonna get tacos but i stopped in the funko store have i ever taken you to the funko Funko store um wait, wait what have i ever taken you to the funko store Oh no! I didn't know that. Existed. Yeah. So on uh, sixty-five, um, there is a beer distributor. Uh, the last one before the stadium's downtown, and um, in the back, they they legitimately have a Funko store with common Funkos and Funkos that are hard to find, and there are you know. But every time I go in there, the people are always rude. And I was just thinking about that because I, you know, I went in there and I asked, Hey, did you guys like, cause I'm, I'm a big animation fan. I'm a big fan of a lot of things. Uh, Steven knows this, but you know, if you're a new listener, like I am a big fan of a lot of things. I watched a few documentaries on Betty Boop and animation. I was like, I want a Betty Boop Funko because that is something interesting. And they're like, no, we don't have a Betty Boop Funko. Did you look? I'm like, I don't work here. Like, I'm like, right, you know, if yeah. I I was gonna buy something at that point, no, I'm not. You know, mm-hmm. I, I sold hats for three, four, five years. You know, I'm not gonna be a jerk to somebody. Like, it's just it's that gatekeeping aspect that I'm like, ugh, it really gets in my gut. No, I, I completely get that. But yeah, I'm gonna have to take you there whenever this pandemic's all said and done, or anytime really. But it, I mean. It that kind of stuff just bothers me. Like you come like with the place, you know, in hope that's not there anymore. Like I'm sure you've had that experience there, you know. And I go to this like one or two times, and I was like, yeah, it's not for me. Yeah, but I mean, like, you know, Funko is kind of like that beanie baby of the 2010s. Granted, they've lasted, you know, ten years now with the Funko mm-hmm. Pops at least, and they're they continue to put out a lot, a lot of stuff and I get overwhelmed sometimes. And that's why I only collect specific things. But even within that own community, if you don't collect a specific line, like the office, for example, I'm not a big fan of the office. I like parks and rec. That's just me. They're like, did you buy the new office pop? I'm like, no. They're like, why? I'm like, I don't like it. Like, how don't you like the office? I'm like, Ugh, I don't want to have this conversation again. (laughs) Like, (laughs) like i'm like it's cringy to me but like my girlfriend really likes it i've seen a lot of the episodes but it's just not my thing and they're just like you gotta buy office pops i'm like no i don't like ugh. but no but um yeah i mean this week i guess or i mean over the last month i've got in their san diego comic-con virtual events i was able to get jackbox from the jack in the box commercials you know what oh, I'm talking cool. about? Yeah. Uh, as well as well as the Fanta Orange Clown, I finally got it. <laughs> and uh, 
King Bugs Bunny, and then obviously a lot of McDonald's guys. But um, yeah, I mean, if anybody has any suggestions, I always like to learn more stuff and about new stuff and, you know, collect new things. And my girlfriend doesn't always like it, but hey. Because I just bring stuff into that. Go ahead. Yes, it is what it is. I just bring more stuff into the house. I'm sure your fiance feels the same way. It's like, Steven, you got another video game? It's like, yeah, but, you know, it's my hobby. I'm like, you get Starbucks every day. Shut your (laughs) mouth. I don't think shut your mouth, but just stop. (laughs) (sighs) But I guess, and we're going to skip over the one thing that I had written down because we might lose some listeners by virtue. Uh, and Steven knows what I'm talking about. Um, but do you want to talk a little bit about the game? I kind of figured we can wrap it up with the game that me and you have been kind of simultaneously been playing, uh, whether it's CTR that week or, you know, Splatoon, but we've been recently what, and it's been a few weeks though, but we've been playing uh, super Mario world on the, uh, super Nintendo or the switch, but the super Nintendo, uh, online there. Yeah, the the app, companion app or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've just been trying to... I mean, you know, because Dylan only has a Switch right now, so um, there's not a lot of games that we can really play online together. So we we kind of decided to, you know, kind of go back and we, we, we always used to play Super Mario World. So, yeah, you know, we're just kind of jumping through and it's been kind of easier this time because you can kind of create your own safe point <laughs> yeah that that's so, very that, helpful that's or suspend point whatever they call it but that's been a lifesaver because i th- feel like we wouldn't have gotten as far as we have with without them <laughs> yeah so we're on what for fun yeah we're on like world seven like the last one yeah and we are stuck if i recall <laughs> We're going to have to maybe play it tomorrow night or something like that to see if we can get any further and update you guys on the next podcast. But uh, it's definitely something like, you know, like if you have a friend that you, you know, especially during this time, like that find, you know, talk to them, uh, play games with them, you know, like they're still your friend just because you can't go see them. And I see a lot of people hanging out and that not, that's not a bad thing necessarily, but like, you know, be safe, you know, yeah, but if you, if you if you can't be safe and you know you can't go out like f- like record a podcast with your best friend, um, <laughs> play Super Mario World. You know, as long as you have Nintendo Switch Online and they have Nintendo Switch Online, it's free. Uh, play Donkey Kong Country and get pissed off. Um, I still love that game. That's so good. It's so good. Like just playing with you, I'm like this. Like Steven loves this game, which like is infectious. And I'm like, I want to play this game and get past the minecart level because I can't. <laughs> but like you know, like I guess the moral I guess I'm trying to say here is like there are ways to spend time with people that you care about without you know feeling yeah. you know the pressure and anxiety that is currently going on in this world. Because I know it can be tough out there for some people, including myself. Yeah, it is. don't forget that there are still people there. Oh, yeah. <sighs> but anyways, on that kind of somber note, do you have any last, last thoughts? Uh, no, I mean, not really. Just um, it, we'll, we'll even post the link below in the, um, in the description. But... Um, yeah, be sure to come back and check out our Twitch streams. Um, we're going to be going all the way through October and obviously into into the month of October too because we're going to stream Crash 4. But uh, I'm going to be streaming all of the Crash games. I just bought Wrath of Cortex and Twin Sandy for my PlayStation 2. Um, copies that actually work, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I plan to at least tackle those in September. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, just, make sure you follow and uh, follow the journey. Cool. And uh, I guess we'll be back uh, next week with some updates and maybe not as much a rant on Funko <laughs> and gatekeeping. And we'll talk about a little bit more of Mario, uh, Mario world. If we beat it, if we don't, uh, if we don't, I will probably cry, but that's my personality. 
but otherwise, uh, I guess we'll see you guys, uh, you know, in the next one. Yeah, see you guys. Bye. Thank you.